Yo, we got two, count them, two disinformation stories today. I know, right? I feel like that's going to be the theme of the day, but here goes this one. You guys remember this beautiful picture, right? And it was, oh, it was so bad. They were whipping those people, even though he's like smiling and carrying tech or takeout bags, but don't mind any of that. They're getting whipped and they're being treated horrifically. There must be confusing these pictures right here with the shit that's coming out of Afghanistan, because that's where flogging and actual whipping is taking place. And the old flogging post is being taken out of fucking storage and being put back up because they're more diverse and inclusive. I think we just ran that one yesterday. But anyways, Border Patrol picks were misconstrued as whipping. Yeah, uh, there, was, there, was, there was no whipping. Fucking imagine that. The media and all the politicians that wanted to grandstand on a fucking lie did it again. No shit. The photographer who captured the controversial images, good fucking shots, actually, if we're being completely honest. What a good action shot, like, you know, where everybody's moving. It's just good composite, compositing for, for an image. But yes, a border patrol agents using horses to keep Haitian migrants from entering the United States uh, says the images may have been, may have been misconstrued as showing abusive behavior. So I wonder if Biden's going to reinstate all of the horses that were taken down from the border. Ah, that's all right. The camps are already cleaned up, so fuck them. They're back in the stables for the cowboys to play with and find the rest of those Indians that are just uh, shooting their arrows in their air and polluting, polluting the sky with all of their teepee fires. And you know, man, come on. Agents depicted in the photos have been accused of using their horse reins. Uh, no, 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 it, it was whips. They were accused of whipping these guys with like actual fucking whips, whatever, uh, to prevent them from crossing into the Rio Grande into Del Rio, Texas. An investigation into the situation is ongoing, but photographer Paul Ratchy says he never saw the agents whip anyone. No shit. Because you can even tell by this uh, very, I, I guess now, iconic photo, it just looks like the reins just kind of hanging off to the side. It's not like he's wielding it or anything. He has the one arm grabbing the guy's t-shirt and the other one still hanging on to the horse. But you know what? Hey, you go ahead and you try to spin it however you want, sweetheart. Some of the Haitian men started running. No shit. Trying to go around the horses and that kind of when the whole thing happened, he, he told uh, KTSM. I didn't even see them whip anybody with the thing. You know, it's been kind of misconstrued, though. I didn't see anybody whip anything. Those pictures show that those evil, awful border officers were clearly whipping those poor black men. Okay. He said of the reins, it was swinging. Yeah. No, he was swinging it, and I didn't see him actually take or whip somebody with it. Uh, that's a something that can be misconstrued when you're looking at the picture. No shit. The photo, which emerged on Monday, drew extreme backlash from lawmakers in the White House and called the images horrible and horrific. Wow, Democrats overreacting? Who could have possibly seen that one coming? On Friday, Biden took it further, saying the federal agents involved will pay for their actions. Well, hopefully you guys pay this guy because he's a hell of a photographer. It was horrible what you see, what you saw, what you did, and who you seen. Uh, the people you treated, they, they did. Uh, the horse is barely running them over and people being strapped it's outrageous i promise you those people will pay okay so they did their job uh, they got pill or public publicly shamed like at least when your old boss uh Jarrah obama he made an asshole out of himself to a, a law enforcement officer he at least invited him back to the white house for a beer wonder if he'll do the same if he, he probably already forgot about this entire thing anyways he didn't even go down there to visit it so uh, there's an investigation underway now, and there will be consequences um, for wasting everybody's time by, you know what, not asking the guy who was there and snapped the pictures. And there will be consequences. It's an embarrassment. Oh, this truly is an embarrassment. Trust me. It's beyond an embarrassment. I agree. It's dangerous. It's wrong. It sends the wrong message around the world. It sends the wrong message at home. It's simply not who we are. Truth tellers. Honest people. Yes, I totally agree with you, Joe. Congratulations. The Department of Homeland Security is investigating the incident. What's there to investigate? And the agents involved have been placed on administrative duty and are no longer in direct contact with migrants at the border for doing their job they've been placed on desk duty god bless america at this point speaking of which uh jake sullivan okay what did he do okay there's more emails that are coming out okay i think that's i, I, I forget when that one runs out but there's some more hunter biden stuff <laughs> imagine that right but how about more people from the old guard doing a bunch of shit that they accused trump of doing imagine my shock 
Jake Sullivan, national security advisor in the Biden administration, can be guilty of perjury related to the Hillary Clinton campaign's dirty tricks against uh, Donald Trump. Last week, Michael A. Sussman, a partner at Perkins Coy, uh, the only person who was snatched up by the Durham probe, uh, was indicted by a federal grand jury on charges of making false statements to the FBI about his clients and their motives behind planting the rumor at the highest level of the FBI, a secret Trump Russia server. Yes, exactly. The indictment states that Sussman, as well as a cyber experts recruited for the operation, coordinated with representatives and agents of the Clinton campaign in regards to the data and written materials that Sussman gave to the FBI and the media. One of those campaign agents was Sullivan. According to emails in the special counsel, John Durham obtained on ugh, September uh, 15th, 2016, just four days before uh, Sussman handed off the materials to the FBI. Mark Elias, imagine that he popped up in this again. Go figure. Uh, Sussman's law partner and fellow Democratic operative exchanged emails with the Clinton campaign's foreign policy advisor concerning the Russian bank allegations, as well as other top campaign officials, the indictment states. Sources close to the case confirmed the foreign policy advisor referenced by title is Sullivan. They say Sullivan was briefed. Uh, I got it. She's frightening, even in picture form. Was briefed on the development of the opposition research materials which tried to allege a secret server of Trump's organization was communicating with Russia's Alpha Bank. Uh, the conspiracy theory pushed by opposition firm Fusion GPS was later dismissed as the communication was likely marketing emails. No shit, they got placed on a fucking mailer list? Wow, that's never happened to literally everybody with a fucking email account ever. Mark Elias would occasionally give us updates on the opposition research they were conducting, but it didn't know what the nature of the effort was. Inside effort out Outside effort, who is funding it, who is doing it, anything like that. Sullivan stated under oath. Sullivan also stated that he didn't know that Perkins Coy, the law firm which Elias and Sussman were partners, were working for the Clinton campaign until October 17. Really, motherfucker? When it was reported in the media that the stories revealed the campaign's contract with Fusion, they also produced a so-called steel dossier, which was peddled by everybody. That's the Russian pissed gimmick there. The one that um, was very, very, very much helped along by one John McCain, host organism for the most patriotic brain tumor in history. Sullivan maintained that he didn't even know that the politically prominent Elias worked for Perkins Coey. You guys are partners, you fucking dunce. Okay. A well-known Democratic law firm, major media stories from 2016 routinely identified Elias as general counsel for the Clinton campaign. I didn't even know. I didn't even know. We're, we're both working on the same campaign? That's news to me. And a partner at Perkins Coey. Yeah, again, I'm a fat-headed asshole. That sucks. To be honest with you, Mark wears a tremendous number of hats. That's that's not an excuse for not knowing that uh, you guys were both working on the same fucking campaign, you tart. So I wasn't sure who he was representing. Sullivan testified. I sort of thought he was, you know, just talking to us as, you know, oh my God, get your sh get your story straight, my guy. A fellow fellow traveler in this in this campaign effort, although he acknowledges knowing Elias as and his partners were mis or marshalling opposition research for a campaign project targeting Trump. Who the fuck do you think he could be working for, okay? Do you think it was Gary Johnson at the time, or was he too busy trying to figure out where fucking country capitals are on a goddamn map, or taking his clothes off on stage? Oh, skipping right along to the end. In fact, on the eve of the election, Sullivan put out written campaign statements that claimed Trump and the Russians had set up a secret hotline through Alpha Bank, and he suggested federal authorities were investigating the direct connection between Trump and Russia. He portrayed the shocking discovery as a work of independent experts, computer scientists, very technical terminology, without disclosing their attachment to the Clinton campaign. How, how can you do this? How can you... Uh, whatever. Uh, this, is, this could be the most direct link yet between Donald Trump Trump in Moscow, Sullivan said. You know why? Because you fucking ran with the information yourself, you dumb cuck cadaver looking ass. This is going to be another one of those stories that just kind of slides under the radar because this guy works for the right team. Okay, clearly. What do you think's gonna happen with that border patrol story too? You guys know it's complete and utter fucking horseshit now, right? And it's just—it was a complete media spin job. There, there was nothing behind it. But guess what? He's still gonna be run out there. It's just gonna be run out there like grabbing by the pussy. It's just all Mexicans are rapists. Very fine people on both sides. But hey, I can't change the national 
a narrative. I'm, I couldn't even be naive enough to think I'm making a dent. But for her, whoever watches this video and whoever sees this information, hopefully it helps you out. Hopefully it changes your perspective, maybe a little bit on some things. And that's what I aim to do. Okay, so we'll marshal on here today. I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.